Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Dohid, and I'm here once again with a sensational topic as usual. And today's topic is Prisma Flow Diagram 2020. Welcome back. Today we'll talk about Prisma Flow Diagram 2020. So what is Prisma Flow Diagram 2020? Where did it come from? If you are a scientist, a researcher, a medical student, a doctor who is working on a systematic review or meta-analysis, then you know that you follow a checklist known as PRISMA, PRISMA checklist. And PRISMA stands for Preferred Reporting Items for Systematic Reviews and Meta-Analysis. We used to have PRISMA checklist 2009 before, but now we have PRISMA checklist 2020. And in PRISMA checklist 2009, when you follow that and you write your paper or you, or you wrote your paper, you used to draw Prisma Flow Diagram 2009, but now you draw Prisma Flow Diagram 2020. Today we'll talk about how different is 2020, what do you do, how do you make it, how do you draw it, how do you understand it. If you understand it, systematic review and meta-analysis writing will become very easy for you. So let's begin. Prisma Flow Diagram 2020 is a little different than Prisma Flow Diagram 2009. Now look at Prisma Flow Diagram 2009. The 2009 diagram looked something like this. Now look at Prisma Flow Diagram 2020. This diagram looks something like this. Now how are they different? As you can see in both diagrams, we have the same four sections. We start with identification, identification yes then we go for screening then we go for eligibility and then we go for the inclusion of the studies but as you can see prisma flow diagram 2020 looks a little complicated looks a little scary a bigger one so don't get scared i'll make things easier for you so let's begin with the first part first section that is identification so as the identification begin we start with the records. Now, what do you mean by records? That, that's what you would say, right? So before we understand this diagram, we need to understand these three terminologies. For Prisma flow diagram, we need to understand the difference between these three terminologies. What are those three terminologies? What are studies or study? What are records? And what are reports? Yes, if you don't understand the difference between these three things, you will not be able to draw your Prisma flow diagram. So the first thing first is the study. As you can see in the diagram, in the flow chart, in the flow diagram, on the top you see, on the top you will see the studies that are, that are, that are identified through different databases and registers. So the studies are, what are studies? The clinical trials. Or, or observational studies, whatever you have included. Usually they have the patients, and if it's a clinical trial, you will have intervention, and then you will have an outcome. If it's an observational study, there will be no intervention. So you already know this, so this is a study. Now, Prisma Flow Diagram 2020 defines the study as something that has population, that has outcome, and probably has intervention if it's a clinical trial. So this is a study. But now what is a report and what is a record? So let's talk about the report. Study is published, right? Sometimes it is not published and you have a document. So a study on paper is a report. So your study when published as an original article is actually a report. A published paper is a report, an unpublished paper is a report. So a published paper, anytime a study is in a paper form, a document, it is a report. So a study is just a broad study when it's published and written, or I would say the better word is when it is written, it's a report. Now, what is a record? Record is the title and the abstract. So the title and the abstract is the record. So now we know what are these three things. Study, the report is the published or written study, and the records are the titles and the abstract. So as you can see in the first box, identification, you identified the records. Once you identify the records in different databases, now the next box 
on the left side, we can call it as 1B because that is right next to the first box. So in that, you remove the duplicates. So whatever the total number of studies you found through data databases, now you remove duplicates. And we know how to remove duplicates through different um, softwares like uh, EndNote or Mendeley, the reference manager softwares or you can do it through Excel. So there are different ways to remove duplicates. Once you remove duplicates, now you move to the next part that is screening. Now the screening begins and you can see now the records will be screened. And that means the titles and abstracts will be screened and it will be done by two people, as you know, first author and usually the second author and you do the screening and you just look at the titles and the abstracts, as you know, and you remove irrelevant ones. So see, the records excluded, the second box 2B, records are excluded. And here, the records that you looked at initially in the, in the box 2A. So this is how you do it. So now the, the records that are excluded are gone. Now, what, did, what is the number left? Whatever is the number left, let's say, let's say initially you had 1,000 studies in box 1A then duplicates removed, then you have 900 studies. And now you looked at the records, the titles and abstract, that means records mean titles and abstract, remember? So you now looked at it and 600 are left and 300 were excluded. So in the box 2B, 300 will be written. And now box 3A are now the second part of screening. That means now you will look at the reports. You will extract the reports, you will assess the reports that are that are retrieved you will retrieve the reports that means you will find the full text articles so 600 papers left now look at the 3b now what are the total number of full text articles that you found versus the ones you excluded that means you could not find let's say you could not find 100 so 600 papers were left you you found out that out of these 600 only 500 are full text papers available so you remove 100, so now you have 500 left. Now you come to the next part that is eligibility, 4A, box number 4A, you see that? Eligibility. So here you will keep it as eligible studies. 500 studies will be looked at for eligibility. And now on the next side, the right side, you see the box number 4B. Now you will exclude some studies and you will give some reasons. The exclusion, of those studies could be through your inclusion exclusion criteria or through the quality appraisal. So you write down the proper reasons why you excluded those studies. Three reasons usually are given, but you can give more reasons. And look at other people's Prisma flow diagrams 2020 to understand how many reasons they have given, how they have given reasons. This will give you an idea to learn how it is done. So you have removed the studies that were not eligible or they were of low quality. Now you have the total number of studies left. Now the next box. Now this box is a little complicated. Here it says the studies, new studies included and the reports of the studies included. Now, what does that mean? Yes, as I said, studies are overall clinical trials. So let's say out of those 500, 400 are excluded. Now you have only 100 reports left. So total reports, the last option will be reports, 100 reports left and how many studies? It could be 100 or it could be 90 or it could be 80. Why? Because one study can have multiple papers. One study can have a published paper, an original article, but it can also have a protocol. It can have different things. It can have conference proceedings as well. So that's why the reports could be more and studies could be a little less. So this is how the Prisma Flow Diagram 2020 is done. You can do it manually. You can do it electronically. It's up to you. But now I hope you understand how it is done. Remember the four parts, identification, screening, then comes the eligibility, and then comes the inclusion. And in the identification, we looked at the titles and abstracts, the records. Then we did the screening of titles and abstract. Then we found the full text article. Those are the reports. And then when that is done, then we did the eligibility uh, search. And we, we found out that um, these many studies are eligible. These are not eligible. And then we have the final number. And this is what the Prisma Flow Diagram 2020 is. 
So congratulations, your Prisma flow diagram 2020 is done and I hope you understand how it is done. Watch this video again, rewatch it, rewind it, watch it multiple times until you understand Prisma flow diagram 2020. If you have any question, comment below and I'll get back to you. Thank you, have a good day. We'll see you in the next video.